Welcome back to another GCN Tech Clinic. You know the score by now. You send in your questions using the hashtag AskGCNTech. We pick them out and answer them as best as we can. So let's go to our first question from Abdur Fiaz, who says, Hi, I was wondering why all deep section wheels are made out of carbon. As some people say, weight does not matter on the flat, but aerodynamics does. So why not just make them all out of aluminium for style points for entry-level bikes? Well, it is a good question, actually. And in terms of style points for entry-level bikes, you may well have seen our Eurobike, which features aluminium deep section wheels. But the reason tops of premium brands don't make their best wheels from aluminium is because they are considerably heavier than what they are when they're made out of carbon fiber. And in addition to that, making the rim out of carbon fiber allows you to use a different shape and profile to optimize the wheel set for aerodynamics as best as possible. Whereas if you use aluminium, you're constrained to a far tighter tolerance of how you can design and shape the wheel to cheat the aerodynamics and make it as fast as possible. So simple answer is carbon allows the manufacturers to create a faster and lighter wheel set. Next question in is from Huyo, who says, hey Manon and lads, recently swapped my Pirelli P0s for some GP 5000 S's. The former had a weight to PSI chart to recommend what pressure to run the tires at, whereas the Contis have a generic 95 PSI for the 25 millimeter width tires. Can and should I still use the Pirelli recommendation chart? Yeah, just use that chart, don't worry about it. It will give you a guideline of where you can aim to have your tire pressures. So you don't need to stick to it religiously, just gives you a bit of an indicator of a starting point. If you find that you wanna put the tire pressures up very slightly or slightly lower, just take your pick and a bit of trial and error and it should sort you out depending on whether you want the bike to be comfortable, faster, and it depends on what type of terrain and road surface that you're riding on. Next question in is from JO2. They say, hey guys, road slash gravel hydraulic brake pads are so hard to find and they are quite expensive. Would you guys suggest grinding and reshaping those common Shimano mountain bike pads, which are wider, to fit the brake calipers as a cheaper alternative. No, please don't start cutting, chopping, grinding any of your brake pads down whatsoever. They are a key safety device for slowing you down for well, just keeping you safe. That's the whole point behind them, basically. And I would not advise cutting any sort of parts off them. Stick to the recommended parts for your bike and try to buy from a reputable brand. That way you'll have a component which should have a good service life, provide the best, best braking performance possible, and um, well, it just keeps you safe out on your bike. Next question in is from Jimmy Arnold, who says, what is more aerodynamic, a rim brake bike with the cables protruding out the front for the brakes and the gears, or one of those new fancy pants internally rooted handlebars on a disc brake bike that has no cables protruding. And they're saying, assuming the same frame set, and the only difference is the cables and the rim versus disc brakes. Well, this is a tough call if you ask me. And the only true answer I can give to this is the only way to test it, well, the only way to get the answer is by testing it properly in a very scientific, calculated, and precise method. However, as I'm sat here right now, I can't do that. But I will risk putting my neck on the line ever so slightly and give you what I think off the top of my head. So I think the rim brake bike with the cables exposed may well be ever so slightly faster than a fully internally rooted disc brake bike. However, I've not tested it. I don't know that. That's just my off the cuff assumption to give you a bit of an answer. But it would be interesting to see if we could ever put those two things head to head and give you the definite answer. Next question is from Matez Benik, who says, is a tailwind most significant when going uphill, downhill, or riding on flat terrain? Well, the tailwind is affecting the wind conditions that you're riding in, and in terms of aerodynamics, it's most important the faster you're riding. So if you're riding uphill, aerodynamics doesn't play a real key aspect into what's slowing you down, it's the gradient and gravity. Whereas the faster you're riding, the more importance aerodynamics has. And as such, if you have a big tailwind pushing you along, it's gonna improve the aerodynamics of you, the rider. So therefore, it gives you a bigger advantage the faster you're riding at. So in theory, 
Downhill, you should have the biggest benefit from a tailwind. Then on the flat, second best benefit from a tailwind. And if you're cycling uphill, yes, you'll still get an advantage. However, it won't be anywhere near as much if you're cycling downhill. There you go. Next question, Ryan Siebers says, I want to use a bike that is set up with an 11 to 32 cassette and move it over to my kicker with a factory installed 11 to 28 to cassette. Do I need to shorten the chain or change the cassette or can I get away with just swapping the parts over? You don't need to shorten the chain of your bike to put it onto your kicker. That would be, well, a little bit crazy to be honest. <laughs> you certainly don't need to change the cassette. Yes, in theory, the chain will be ever so slightly too long when you're riding on the turbo, but I wouldn't worry about it. It's only going to be relevant if you're riding in the small chain ring and a small sprocket at the back, which let's face it, is a gear that you probably shouldn't be riding anyway. So save yourself some time, effort and money. Don't worry about changing any of the components and everything will be fine. Right, our last question for this week's GCN Tech Clinic is from, fantastic username, NZL Kevin 88 Lovely. Um, they say, what do pro team mechanics do when they fit new brake pads that need to be bedded in and the bike is needed for racing the next day. Well, presumably if you're in the middle of a grand tour and you need to put some new brake pads in, you do want your bike to be in tip top condition, ready to go for the next stage. So what you'll find the mechanics will do is they'll have a little bit of sandpaper that they can just rough up the edge of the brake pads and take that sort of surface finish that they have on them when they come out of the molds and when they're first made in the factory. And that means that they'll be set up ready to go for when the rider is racing the very next day. Although they will normally tell the rider that they've put some new brake pads in their bikes. It just gives them a little bit of a, a peace of mind that their brakes will be slightly different to how they were the day before. So yeah, the reason behind it is ultimately to keep the rider as safe as possible. Hope you enjoyed this week's GCN Tech Clean. If you have, give this video a big thumbs up and remember to keep submitting your questions using the hashtag AskGCNTech in the comments section down below and I'll try to pick out the best ones and I'll see you next week.